different syntax because this is done in jQuery as opposed to uh, full-blown JavaScript. So it theoretically should be simpler doing it this way. All right. What I want to show you, first of all, is this. Navigator get location, as in an if statement. As we all, as we know, an if statement either returns a true or a false. An if statement returning true, the, this line will get executed. If this if statement returns false, that line will get uh, executed. In this case, this is seeing if this browser supports geolocation. Because if the browser does not support geolocation, then it will go and it will show this error message. All right? So let's go and let's, let's try IE. That's a safe bet, depending on what version they have. the question it asks us uh, is different. All right? It actually gives us a finer degree of control. Because I could say allow once, or I could define for this site to always allow and always deny. And don't tell me. <laughs> Weirdly worded thing. Always like, don't tell me. Yeah. Yes? Um, can I ask a slightly unrelated question that yeah, you sure. visit at some other point? I've noticed when I've been visiting websites recently, uh -huh. the weirdest thing happens, um, a lot of the words will be highlighted, um, and if you click on them, they send you to junk pages. Yeah. Has, has anybody else been yes. that recent, It's like a recent thing, like just within the past couple months. It's, it's epidemic. If, if I have, uh, if I'm understanding you correctly, I have seen that actually for a while. Really? Yeah. Like the stupid ads or something? Well, yeah, or even if I click on a legitimate link, it'll open three windows. Right. Two of them will be junk. Hmm. That just happens. Yeah. Yeah. No? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Maybe well, we, we can revisit that later, but I wanted to ask. So. Right. Sorry. <laughs> Before I forgot. That's all right. That's strange. So I can allow once. Yes. It's being real sure. And then it should go and show me that it's a area, 13 degrees Celsius. Oh, we can scroll through and see. It can even tell the future. It's going to tell that tonight at 10 p.m. it's going to be raining. What's it supposed to be tomorrow night? Rain, 15 no. Celsius. No. What's it going to be Friday night? Well, I care about tomorrow night because it's Halloween. Oh, we, have, we had trick-or-treating on Sunday. Oh. Yeah, so that's over. But Friday night is senior night for the band. Rain and 10 degrees Celsius. Excellent. All right. Anyhow, so this version of IE does support that. So older versions of IE did not support that. The point I want to make is this is a test to see. The navigator geolocation is the object that does this, that does the actual locationing of the device. All right. It's a DOM thing. Remember we talked about DOM, document object model? And typically we did things like document, get element, by ID, blah, blah, blah. All right, this is just a different aspect of, of the DOM. This is tapping into the navigator or the browser's geolocation function. So if that exists, if that is true, then we call the get current position method. All right. And these two things here are function names, <coughs> location success and location error. The way this function works is if I call get current position on navigator dot geolocation get current position, if it can give me the position, it will call this. If it 
cannot give me a position, it will call that. So it calls one of these two functions. It's almost like there's an if statement built into this function. That if it works, <coughs> call the first function that's listed there. If it doesn't work, call the second one. So here's success. And what we're doing effectively here, and the details of this doesn't matter so much, all right, is we are going in and we are are getting information about this is interesting the weather and we're displaying it, otherwise we're displaying an error message. And then there's navigation stuff. If we can't find it, it tells us what the error is. Either there's a timeout error, we can't detect location, or we denied. And we answer no to that. The details of the weather are less important to me at this point than the uh, actual, what do I want to say, the actual mechanism by which we ask the browser for its location and calling the two methods of either success or failure. So let's create a, a trim down web page. To, to explore the capabilities of this one. Um, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to copy this code. Yes. Where is it getting the weather from? That's a good question. Is it like weather.com? I mean, There's a local storage weather cache that it appears to be using. And I'm wondering if that is a jQuery thing. I don't think it's right. I don't think it's. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Weather API equals API open weather map forecast. Oh, okay. There we go. And you pass it the latitude and longitude of the position. And then it calls. There we go. It tries to pull it from the cache first. That way, if it doesn't have to go out to the server, it won't. So that, that's what it's doing there. All right. So again, that, that wouldn't be a jQuery thing. That must be also built into the, the DOM of the browser. At any rate, let's go and let's build our own guy that's humbler than this, perhaps, but um, we can really break it down and see stuff. Now, where is Notepad++? Let's go and create a new. Because with any function, you could give the function arguments. So in this case, this function does not require any arguments. 
So I'm not giving any. But I could call this function and pass it some parameters. So when you define a function, you define the list of arguments. And if there are no arguments, you just have the parentheses side by side. So this is just going to be a really, really bare bones page. I have, I have a button, and I'm going to ask it to find a location. And if it gets an error, it's going to pop up an alert box. Otherwise, it's going to pop up a box that's going to tell me something about the location. So what is this function going to do? If I click the button, please allow geolocation access for this to work. see what's going on. Do you have to encode the permission, maybe, the, the, the code to ask the permission to turn it on? Or? The get location should ask the permission. Okay. I am not sure I'll have to take a look at this. I might have to copy this up to the server for this uh -huh. to work. Maybe running it locally is what the problem is. That's what I'm suspecting. Okay, but let's look at the code and let's see what happens. All right, I have a button. And I have an on-click event that says on-click call get location. So it calls this method. It looks to see if geolocation is enabled or not. 
all right? Is geolocation enabled in this browser? Yes, because the error message didn't say your browser does not support geolocation. The error message said permission denied. Please allow geolocation access for this to work. All right, so it does have geolocation, but when it tried to get the location, the permission was denied. Now, I don't know if that's a browser setting or what. I'm going to go and upload this to the web server so that we can play with it up there. Um, let's see. put it in the CISS 268 folder and so from here I'll go cissql.rarainccc.edu slash cissss268 slash geolocation.html All right, now it's asking me. Right, yeah, I, I wasn't running it through a web server. And, yeah. So now it's asking me this, and, and I can say allow. And it doesn't do anything because I didn't tell it to do anything if it succeeded. If I click this and it wasn't able to get it, or like before, the permission was denied. In fact, let's open it up in another browser so I can deny the permission. I'll say no. Then it gives me that error message. So remember, we're going to get one of two actions based on whether this works or not. If it can determine the location, or one of three actions. One, is, one possibility is the browser doesn't support geolocation, in which case we'll get this error. If it does support it, either it successfully can get the location or it did not successfully get the location. If it successfully gets the location, this guy gets called. If it unsuccessfully gets the location, this guy gets called. Well, let's see. I'm going to put an alert in here that says, an alert is just a message that pops up. So I'm going to say, I know where you are. <laughs> Save it, and I'll copy it up here. All right, click. I know where you are. So it successfully found it. So again, three options. Browser doesn't support it is one option. Browser supports it. There's two options underneath that. It got the location successfully or it didn't get the location successfully. It didn't get the location successfully. One of the possibilities is because we denied permission to tell us what the location is. Then there's other possibilities too. Maybe the service timed out. All right. Or whatever. All right. Maybe there's a problem at that end. All right. Now, now that we know where there are, what can we do with that? Well, let's see. can display the latitude and longitude where the person is. Okay? So, I'm going to 
change my alert. to say this. Now, what is position here? What is position? Position is an object that contains information about the user's position. <coughs> Remember, this is the successful function that gets the, 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 the function that gets called if it's successful. So if it gets a if it gets a position successfully, this contains the information about that position. So this is the object we ask information about. And some of that information is the coordinates of the latitude and longitude. Alright? So let's run this and it will tell us the latitude and longitude that it thinks we're at. Copy that over there. Yes. Click that. It thinks that we are at latitude of 41 something and a longitude of negative 82 something. Are we there? Yeah. That's, yeah, I recognize yeah, those numbers. Those are Let's let's look because I know you can use Google Maps to determine that. I did not know that. <laughs> did you ever a full tendons to that? I can't select that. I'll do, I won't take it, I'll do 41.36, negative 82.10. So let's say, 42.36, negative 2 in the classic Google Maps. You Google Maps use this. If I already know the location's coordinates, it's okay, I don't think that. You know, maybe my rounding is bad. I, yeah, I think there's yeah. something to put the whole thing in there. Um, so I'm going to do this. Um, so I can copy and paste it. Uh, document that get element by id dot or location inner html equals so yeah may, good observation on that I wasn't paying attention. I thought it did a search based on some other criteria. But yeah, it, it might be that, you know, in the grand scale of things, that is. There's a website you can go on. It's fine. It's the same thing as it gives
if you don't forget a parenthesis or two when your toe's about to fall off. Puts us where? In Laria. Yeah, but downtown. But downtown Laria. Because that's probably where. Is that maybe where? It's probably where the. Telecom center is at. Yeah, probably. probably yeah, exactly. Right. In other words, that's where that's located. Because remember, it's not. This doesn't have a GPS device on it, so the only way that this guy knows where it is is to go through and look up in that table to where the IP was assigned to. It was assigned to some place in Illyria. All right. Now let's try this guy. Let's try the mobile device. All right. C I S. I'm going to copy this down. 41334050 negative 82.0724444. Tell me this isn't spooky. Zoom in. I'm going to write that down in case there's ever like an emergency or something like that. <laughs> I can, like, you know. Outside there is the fountain. <laughs> this is a business building. And sure enough, we're right there in the business building. All right, the college center is that way and all that. So I gave a 